The United States also divides the powers of government among three branches, the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. At the federal level of the U.S. government, the legislature is also bicameral. There is a House of Representatives and a Senate. Together, the House of Representatives and the Senate are called Congress. Representatives in the U.S. are elected by the people of the state they represent. The number of representatives from each state is determined by the population of the state. Representatives can propose legislation. The House debates proposed legislation and votes on it. If it passes, it must also be considered by the Senate. The U.S. Senate reviews legislation passed by the House of Representatives, but Senators can also propose bills themselves. Bills are debated and voted upon and sometimes amended in the Senate. A bill must pass in both the House of Representatives and the Senate to become law. U.S. Senators are elected by the citizens of the state they represent, two per state. Since all states have an equal number of Senators, this helps protect the interests of states with smaller populations. Since the U.S. Senate is a democratically elected body and is accountable to the people, U.S. Senators are willing to change or even vote down bills passed by the House of Representatives. The next branch of government we'll explore is the Executive Branch. The Executive Branch is made up of the President and the Cabinet. The United States is a presidential republic. The head of state is not a hereditary monarch, but an elected president. The president is also the head of government. The president signs bills passed by Congress, and the president chooses the cabinet. In the United States, members of the cabinet are called secretaries and are in charge of running departments. Like their counterparts in Canada, they are responsible for ensuring that laws and policies passed by Congress are implemented and enforced. An important difference, however, is that members of the U.S. Cabinet cannot be members of Congress. Okay, let's look at the judicial branch. The United States also has a Supreme Court, as well as lower courts. As in Canada, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. Supreme Court judges are nominated by the President, confirmed by the Senate, and hold office for life, however they may be removed by Congress. Once again, the executive branch cannot influence a judge's decision by threatening to fire the judge. The U.S. Supreme Court is the last court of appeal, and the U.S. Supreme Court also has the power to overturn laws that it deems unconstitutional. The United States does not use the system of responsible government that is used in Canada. If a bill that is supported and sponsored by the President fails to pass in Congress, there is no requirement for the President to resign and call an election. But the power of the executive branch is curbed in other ways by the legislative branch. In fact, all three branches of government in the U.S. have some power over the others under a system called checks and balances. Under the system of checks and balances, the President has the following powers. He or she can veto that is, cancel legislation that has passed with the support of less than two-thirds of the members of Congress. The President can also propose legislation. Congress has power over the executive branch as well. The Senate must approve the President's cabinet and judicial appointments. The President and cabinet run the country, but the Congress controls the money needed to do so. With the support of enough members, Congress can override a presidential veto. Should the President break the law, he can be impeached, that is, tried by Congress and potentially be removed from office. The Executive has some influence over the courts. The President nominates the judges who will serve on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court may nullify the President's executive orders if they are unconstitutional. If the President is put on trial, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court will preside over the trial. The Supreme Court may temporarily stop the executive branch from carrying out actions until the court has had a chance to rule on their legality. The judicial branch, as previously mentioned, 
can strike down laws passed by Congress if those laws are seen to violate the Constitution. The legislative branch, however, has considerable power over the courts. While the President may nominate judges, the Senate has the final say as to whether they actually become judges. Judges found to be corrupt or incompetent can be removed by congressional action. Congress can change the laws that guide the court's decisions. Congress also has the power to change the Constitution of the United States, the document which all other laws are subject to. And finally, Congress can change or even abolish the court system. Through this system, each branch of government has a check on the power of the other branches, and the power is balanced between them. Baron Montesquieu would no doubt be impressed.